Hello, my name is Silva Harapetian. Welcome to another episode. You may not know his name, but you do know his artwork. The stickers and the posters of Obey the Giant are hard to miss at every street corner. The artist behind the art is Shepard Ferry. He has, through his art over the years, become an activist fighting for equal humanity for all people, regardless of race, religion, nation, or culture. It seems only fitting that he would have his solo exhibition right here in Glendale, in a city with a dark past, but a present that is hopeful, a community that is diverse and its people resilient. I love to share my ideas. I love to meet people. My work is all about finding connections with people. The work being out there to start the conversation and me taking part in it personally is really important. Shepard Ferry is an iconic street artist. He found mainstream success with the design of the Hope poster for Barack Obama's 2008 campaign. It's said to have been the most effective American election poster in history. Uh, where do you want it signed? Maybe. Ferry is an activist who has, since he was young, been living his life with a sense of urgency. I, I think I'm especially aware of that being a diabetic. My dad's a doctor who doesn't sugarcoat things, and he said to me when I was first diagnosed, uh, if you don't take care of yourself, this is going to shorten your life a lot, and even if you do, your life is probably going to be shortened a bit. So I just thought that the clock is ticking, but I think we all understand when we really take a second to think about it that life is a, a, a span that is not that long and it's really important to use your time wisely. We spoke to Shepard Ferry at the opening of the new exhibit at Reflect Space Gallery tucked inside the Glendale Central Library. The exhibit is called Peace is Radical. His stance on social, political and environmental issues are hard to miss in his art. You know, I try to be very open and sensitive, and maybe too sensitive because I'm easily, I'm easily, uh, you know, saddened and disheartened by a lot of the brutality in the world. But the way I process that, which I think is constructive and, and therapeutic, is I try to make images that have a, a, a way of addressing those issues, but also making people think about possibility and making them think about the role of, of beauty, how beauty touches the best part of who we are as humans. And, um, and you know, how you can have this dichotomy of escapism and engagement in art that's very rare in other places. I know that's been very helpful to me to understand that, uh, how that equation works at least some of the time. Ferry's work gained international attention in the early 90s with the sticker of wrestler Andre the Giant. It was a street campaign that led to an international cultural movement. The stickers were in every street corner. I work really fast when I'm on the street. In fact, you know, it takes me about a minute to put a poster up. The impact fascinated Ferry, this idea that there is power in showcasing something unusual and memorable in a public space, a space that's usually reserved for advertising and government signage. He admits he had stumbled into something powerful accidentally, but realizing it was just the beginning for him. He leaned in and built on it. So my thing is as a taxpayer, I should be able to put my thing out on, a, on an electrical box, any sort of public space that's not occupied by advertising. Either that or there should be no billboards, no bus stop ads, nothing. The city's got to be consistent. So as long as there's an inconsistency, I'm going to feel perfectly justified utilizing those spaces. He took the street campaign a step further, adapting this first sticker to create the Obey the Giant campaign. He said, people don't like to be told to obey, but they do it all the time. He thought if people are confronted with it, perhaps they'll snap out of it. The more I put out there, the more people are going to want to know and more power it's going to gain from nothing. And I was fascinated by that idea. 
The campaign featured a stylized and more simplified image of Andre the Giant's face. He painted Obey the Giant image in cities across the world. He said it was his attempt to democratize art. Obey the Giant has since become an iconic symbol of anti-conformity. A well-known street artist turns himself in to Detroit authorities after being charged with vandalizing property. Scaling buildings and billboards to put up his art in cities across the world landed him in trouble and reawakened the age-old question, is it art? or is it vandalism? He was wanted on two outstanding felony counts of malicious destruction of property. It's a situation Ferry himself has been in before. Ferry's been arrested at least 18 times on various charges, including vandalism and destruction of property. Jail time made him rethink his tactics. He's more careful now. I'm, I'm definitely afraid of being caught uh, putting stuff up because Spending time in jail without my insulin is really dangerous and I was really worried for my life when that happened in New York. Back in Glendale at his exhibit opening, he received a citation of a different kind. Look at that. <laughs> I'm getting citations from the government that aren't fine. <laughs> he was honored for his work. In attendance, U.S. State Representative Adam Schiff, City Council Members Elena Saturian and Ardi Kasakian, and California State Senator Anthony Portentino, who presented Shepard Ferry with the California State Certificate of Appreciation. Almost everything I do starts with me you know, having something that I am frustrated with that I want to use my voice to address or something I'm inspired by, and then how that mutates and take, you know, take shape into, evolves into something that I want to share with people is sometimes a very fast process and sometimes a very arduous longer process. Ferry continues to challenge the boundaries between traditional and commercial art and believes that art should be accessible to everyone. Co-curator of Reflect Space Gallery, Ara Oshagan. What's really critical is that uh, a well-known artist like him would decide to have an exhibition here at the library, right? You know, his work is all about social justice, and our gallery has deals with social justice issues, and also he's a big supporter of libraries, public spaces where people can think, read, organize, uh, you know, have events. And, and you know, the library is really important in terms of a, a context of an exhibition. It is perhaps one of the last non-commercial spaces that we have to gather, right? Everywhere you go, you go to Americana, you go anywhere, people are trying to sell you stuff, right? Here, none of that. Right here, it's all about uh, reading and about gathering and, and, and bringing out issues. So we're very fortunate to be working as curators in this exhibition, in this gallery, to talk about these issues, social justice issues. Ferries used iconic images from Americana to question what it really means to be an American citizen. He was an outspoken critic of the Bush agenda and the Iraq war. In 2014, he painted a mural with the slogan, make art, not war, to promote an agenda of global peace. In 2015, he created an illustration at the Eiffel Tower in Paris that was unveiled during the climate conference. In 2017, in an attempt to protest President Trump's rhetoric, he took on the underlying issues of racism, sexism, xenophobia, environmental education, and climate change. Ferry produced a number of posters depicting minority Americans. The images were reminiscent of the Hope poster in the stylized features of red, white, and blue. The posters include the first three lines from the American Constitution, we, the people. I hope that, you know, some people will consider that, um, you know, fear and insecurity that it comes from, uh, a, you know, material accomplishment being put high up as a, something that's important to achieve is not maybe the way to 
feel good about yourself or to make other people feel good about themselves. But you know, finding what people, what we all have in common, and uh, I obviously think that there's so much uh, joy and creativity. But um, yeah, there's there's just more to life than. Um, than, than the rat race, and I, I hope that my art conveys that. I hope that how I live my life conveys that. Do you have a favorite? I mean, in this, in this room, I guess my favorite thing is this wall backdrop because I think this wall backdrop is including several different things that I think work well um, individually, but it's also bringing them together harmoniously in, in a way that gives people a lot to digest and um, you know the the, uh, the scale of it also I think is, is effective. I love doing, painting large murals because it changes people's experience in the city in the urban landscape they you know it, a lot of times people think oh you know all of that, all of that space out there where there's impressive architecture or big signage, that's controlled by people with a lot of power or deep pockets. But you know, I, I started off with a four dollar an hour skate shop job and slowly built my way up to being able to do these larger murals, still with very few resources compared to the people that usually control those spaces. So I love the idea that a larger scale piece like this that then also connects to what I do larger scale on the street makes people think about individual empowerment, um, that we don't have to be spectators, we actually have more power than we think. He once said that he hopes through his art and his career, people can see that you can succeed without being absorbed and corrupted by the system. Let that sink in for a second. Now, if you find yourself in Glendale, make sure you get yourself a limited edition card, a library card that he specifically designed for our library. I'm Silva Harapedian. Thanks for watching. See you next time.